Afternoon, Lead Bullets for Life here. Thanks for joining me this afternoon, uh, guys. Uh, today I'm gonna start uh, continue on with the uh, uh, Colt uh, 38 Long Colt uh, series. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about its um, origin and its dimensions. And basically, the original loading was a 150 grain uh, bullet with uh, I believe 18 grains of black powder, and it was lengthened to 1.03 inches over the old uh, uh, 38 uh, short colt. Anywho, uh, now that uh, it is modern day, um, we're looking at uh, different uh, loadings for it. And uh, here are some of the things that we're, we're looking at. So we're on the web right now looking at uh, loads for the uh, 38 uh, long colt and its dimensions. Go ahead and get some loads. So the 38 Long Colt was actually adopted by the uh, U.S. military in 1892, and it was using their uh, 1892 Colt 38 Long Colt uh, revolver, the swing out cylinder type, and basically it was not quite as uh, powerful as the 38 Special, and but a little bit more powerful than the old 38 uh, Short Colt. 38 uh, Long Colt was actually used uh, in the um, Spanish-American War during the Rough Rider charge up the San Juan Hill and Kettle Hill and most uh, NCOs and officers carried that revolver and it was very successful against the Spaniards. Uh, move up a few years just after the Spanish-American War in 1899 to 1902 during the Philippine uh, insurrection. Uh, the 38 Long Colt was well, let's just say that it was it fared pretty dismal against the uh, uh, Moral Tribesmen, and uh, they're known as the Moral Guadamantados. Now, what, what happened was these Guadamantados would actually drug themselves up and to avoid feeling any pain when the Doughboys would fire on these um, uh, warriors, uh, you would have to empty out the gun pretty much to stop them. Sometimes it wouldn't stop them at all, you know, they'd have to hit. Uh, chest shots and all. Uh, reports have it that uh, after a uh, U.S. A soldier uh, emptied out his revolver and then they were bayoneted with the rifles, uh, the uh, Waterman title would actually push the rifle into themselves just to reach the doughboy and cut their heads off. This was the beginning of uh, looking for a new uh, military sidearm that would uh, be more of a man stopper. And so uh, they brought out the old uh, Colt 45's new surge revolvers and used them until they can come up with another solution for uh, a sidearm that would be uh, more stopping power than the old 38 Long Colt. So originally uh, the best choices for the um, 38 Long Colt would be the 145 grain to 155 grain soft lead hollow base bullet. Um, All right, we have an article here from Guns Magazine, and it's about the 38 Long Colt. And here you have a couple of the examples. Over to your left, you have the uh, 38 uh, uh, Short Colt. Then you have the Long Colt, 38 Special, and 357 Magnum. Uh, the all 38 uh, Long Colt was actually um, designed for. 36 caliber capping ball conversions and uh, cartridge conversions and uh, they were quite successful at it. Some of your um, western movies such as like Good, Bad and the Ugly, uh, they would carry these revolvers. It was easy for the load up versus the capping ball method. This here is a picture of the 1861, sorry, 1861 Navy. Okay, so you can shoot 38 specials through a 375 inch bore. To do this effectively, uh, most people use a, a hollow based uh, wad cutter or a hollow based 150 grain round nose. The mold for that round nose uh, is no longer in production. The, the person that actually designed it is passed away. So uh, getting one is uh, tough to find, but you can find uh, copies through another company. And I believe they talk about it here. Here's an 1861 uh, 38 uh, Colt conversion 
the three grain attack group and a one and three quarter inch uh, group at 25 yards with the 148 grain hollow blaze white cutter. And the whole purpose of the white cutter, hollow blaze white cutter, was to uh, the skirt which should expand upon firing and then engage the rifling of the uh, 375 inch bore and uh, spin the barrel more accurately. As you can see, they're very successful at it. So you don't have, if you're not a reloader, then the hollow blaze white cutter factory loads are for you. Whether from Remington, uh, Winchester, or Federal, uh, Winchester seemed to be the, the most uh, possible uh, choice. Winchester makes uh, a good brand, and it's uh, readily available. Although the 38 long cold is. Uh, and not used anymore uh, as a uh, sidearm. It is a great target uh, round. Um, and uh, if you'd like to get bullets for it, you can actually get a hold of uh, Buffalo Arms and their website or SPG sales. Okay, so we have a website here called Shooter's Reference, and it has uh, information on loading the 38 Long Colt, and it also has the uh, 38 uh, Short Colt with the 125 grain. Uh, 38 long colt and the 150 grain round nose and uh, loading is pretty easy you're looking at maybe uh, 2.6 grains or 3.3 grains of any fast burning powder um, if you look over here it makes reference to Hodgson's uh, clays HP 38 tag group uh, Trail Boss and Universal. All right, guys, we're in the garage, and today is uh, one of your Indian summers here in California. It's going to be like 89 degrees today, and it's already uh, pretty close to 80 already, and it's only uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. I think we're about 85 now. But uh, anyways, uh, here's a uh, dummy round I made. And we'll be using HP 38s. We're gonna probably do two low, we'll probably do 3.3 and 3.5 grains. And then uh, I was gonna do um, Alliant uh, Power Pistol, but uh, I think I'll do that for another time. But I want to. All right, it looks like we're doing 3.3. That'll work. All right, we've got two sets of uh, primed and ex expanded uh, shells, case mouth wise, flared out. And uh, I'll use one for the. Uh, Black powder substitute, and this is the Remington here. I may start with these here for the uh, HP 38. Okay, it's a little bit bulgy, but um, these uh, cases have not been fire formed yet. Yeah, so a little bit bulgy right here. Kind of reminds me of a nine millimeter. Once fired, though, they'll fire form up nicely. And I'm using a nine millimeter crimping die. So what I did was I placed the bullet squarely on the uh, case. Um, there's not much room for expander, so I got to be really careful not to shave the. Um, bullet itself but right now the lubrication is actually helping to go in straight and so far I uh, haven't had any uh, wasted bullets so the flaring is just right but again I gotta really be uh, careful all right and as you see the bullet went in nicely I bought some of the excess here and voila okay getting the excess lube off the bottom of the bullet is significant so you don't contaminate the the powder all right guys there's 50 3.3 grains of HP 38 and 147 well, 149 grain uh, round nose flat point and um, we will get to the black powder ones another time because right now we're looking at about looks like 88 degrees out here already Okay, let's check the last charge and see if it's going to be 3.3. .3. 
3.3 on the nose, guys, so it's pretty accurate. So hopefully got with consistent charges here. Anyways, guys, uh, Lead Bullets for Life here. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you see, you want to see more, please rate and subscribe. Make those comments. So next time we'll be doing the black powder. Until then, we'll see you next time at the reloading bench, kitchen, or here at the uh, gun range. Take care. Bye for now.